I have spent the last several years planning for this day and I have spent the last several months preparing for this day and finally it is here. We're getting the new round baler out in the hay field. We're gonna see if we can make some round bales. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. All right, well, filming did not go quite as planned today. My goal was to get out here, uh, put a few bales down and kind of get the hang of the machine and then start filming. But what ended up happening was after I made a few bales, I realized that things were a lot drier than I had anticipated and my window for bailing was rapidly closing. Rather than mess around with filming, which makes everything take quite a bit longer, I just tried to knock out as many bales as I could. But I'm back out in the field now. I'm planning to do some more bailing um, once the sun goes down and I should get another window as the dew moves in. Uh, but before I start that, because it's not quite there yet, let's walk around, kind of see what I've got out here talk about some little issues that I've noticed and what I'm gonna try to do to fix them. I think the biggest problem that I had, and it, it's mostly my fault, some of it's equipment adjustment, some of it is I screwed up when I cut the field, but if you look behind me here, you can see there's two strips of hay that are left on the ground. So the, the pickup on the baler is not picking those up, and the reason for that is that is where the tractor tires run over the windrow. So wherever the tires squash that hay down, the pickup on the baler is not picking that up very well. So part of that, I'm hoping I can adjust out. I've lowered the pickup a little bit so that the teeth are kind of right on the ground and hopefully they can grab that stuff. But the other thing is that my windrows are still too wide and if you guys saw the video where I cut the hay I measured those and I was pretty confident that I had them right how they needed to be but now I'm seeing that oh man it wouldn't it wouldn't have hurt for them to be about a foot narrower well it is starting to cool off out here the sun has just dipped below the horizon uh, the hay itself is feeling cool and that to me means that the dew is probably starting to come on so I think I'm gonna go get the baler and try to get a few more done. It's the next day now. Obviously we ran out of daylight yesterday and I couldn't film anymore, but today the weather is perfect. We have a gentle south breeze going and it's nice and cool. Uh, the hay's just about right, so I think we can go get started and I'm really hoping we can get finished today.
few days later now, I've got all the hay baled. I'm really happy with my new baler. Um, all in all, things went really well for running the machine for the first time. There's definitely a few little adjustments and changes that I need to make for next year. You know, it, it's all a learning process. So now that the hay is baled, it's time to get it out of the field. I loaded up a load of bales last night uh, in the dark, so I wasn't able to film it, but now we're gonna run it over to the barn and see if we can get them unloaded. Originally, my plan, because the 8N is, is down, was to roll these off of the back, but after I got them loaded up, I realized that probably wasn't gonna work, at least not for the bales up here in the front, because we've got this fender that's uh, really in the way, and I'm not definitely not going to be able to push those bills up over that fender. So what are we going to do? Uh, that That is the question. I had a chance to tinker with the 8N a little bit. Um, first, let me get you guys caught up on what's going on with that in case you don't know. I repurchased uh, an 8N with a loader on it that used to belong to my grandpa with the idea that I was going to get it all fixed up and I was gonna use it to handle these round bales. That was a big reason why I only made four by fours because I knew that, or I hoped, that they would be light enough for that tractor to handle. So over the last few months, I have been doing a ton of work to this tractor, getting it ready to go, and I thought that I had it dialed in, and about a week before baling, it developed a little issue. went to the forums to see if I could get any help there. That wasn't super helpful, uh, but I, I kind of diagnosed what I thought was going on. It was either a an issue with the head gasket because when the tractor would sort of spit and sputter, it would blow smoke out of the radiator over, overflow tube and the coolant was really nasty and oily looking. So there's there was obviously some sharing going on there, which shouldn't have been happening. And I was thinking that maybe that a blown head gasket could make it run that way. So I ordered a new head gasket and while it was on the way, I started taking the tractor apart. Well, when I pulled the head off, wouldn't you know, one of those head bolts broke off inside of the block. Now in my short life, I have dealt with a few seized broken off bolts, but I have never dealt with one that gave me this much trouble. Finally, what I had to end up doing or what ended up working was welding a nut to the stud and while it was still cherry red, I just sprayed it down with freeze off. So after getting the tractor all put back together with the new head gasket, new head bolts, a freshly rebuilt carburetor, um, I turned on the gas, fired her up and guess what? Exact same problem. So at this point, I had replaced literally everything in the fuel system and I knew I had good compression with my new head gasket and when it did sputter, it no longer puffed smoke out of the radiator overflow. So that we're making progress, but it still wouldn't run. At that point, I had decided that the only thing left it could be would be an electrical issue. Well, prior to all this going down, I had replaced nearly everything in the electrical system. Uh, the only thing that didn't get completely replaced was the distributor. So I pulled the cap, messed with the rotor a little bit, um, tried putting some of the old parts back in, and I actually got the engine to run at an acceptable level. It's still got a pretty bad miss, and I do have a new distributor coming in the mail because I figured that I can just continue to mess with this thing and put new parts in it. Um, or I could just get a whole brand new one, put it in there, and hopefully all my problems will be solved. But that's not going to be here for a couple of days. So I am hoping that the 8N can just limp through today to unload the trailer and we can maybe get the barn loaded. The good news is, is that the 8N did make it down here under its own power. And like I say, it's got a really bad miss, but it does run. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're just gonna try it and, and really, really hope that it works.
think it just needs a warm up. I hope that's all. Well, the first load is unloaded. The old girl came through. Will she last the rest of the day is anyone's guess, but at least we got the first load off the trailer. So now I guess we can go and do this about 30 more times. Back here at the hay field, I'm using my dad's tractor, the same one that I used to power the baler. Uh, it's got a loader on it as well. I'm not sure if I have shown that yet or not, but I'm using that tractor to load this trailer and so far it's been working out pretty good just going back and forth with the two machines. I've got one more bale here to make a load. But before I put it up there, I wanna weigh it. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do that.
it's almost impossible to see right now but it's about 575 which is pretty consistent with what the other ones have been i think so far i've had 580 and 600 so um that's that's right about where i expect it to be but we'll keep weighing them as we go down the field just to see if anything changes And just when things were starting to roll pretty smoothly and felt felt like I was kind of getting this whole thing figured out, I noticed some smoke in my mirror and I think I figured out what was causing it. I don't think that is supposed to be like that. So ah, this is kind of gonna stop us, I guess, for today. I'm gonna have to get this hay unloaded and then get that wheel off and i think i'm gonna need a whole new tire i don't think that one's gonna be repaired so it's saturday afternoon which means most of those places are closed so it might be a job for tomorrow in other words i think i'm dead in the water Well, in total, I got just about 50 bales moved over here, which is not nearly as many as I was hoping to get. But with the uh, trailer tire blowing out like that, I think we're gonna have to call it quits here today. We are due for a little rainstorm here tomorrow. I think we're supposed to get about a quarter of an inch, so not too much. Uh, normally with square bales, I'd be really worried about that and kind of stressing out about getting them put away, but from what everyone's telling me with the round bales, um, uh, rain, especially that small of an, of an amount, is really not going to hurt them. So that's why I'm trying to not get too worked up about not getting this finished today. So now it's back to the shop to get some tools and try to get all this stuff sort of lined out so that once the bales have a couple days to dry out after this little shower, we can get the rest of them back in here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Mm -hmm.